What's up everybody and welcome back to another Code Music Chill session here at Jashelle Tech TV where we're going to be coding, listening to music and chilling. Make sure you hit subscribe to stay updated with my tech journey. Also participate down below in the live chat or if you're on desktop it's going to be over there on the right or something. But um, feel free to follow along on this project or just watch and hang out. For today's Code Music Chill, I'm doing MDN's Fancy Letterhead Project, which is part of the CSS Building Blocks module. And in the last Code Music Chill, I did the Fundamental CSS Comprehension Project, which was the first project. So it was when I created the business card, gamer card. And so now I'll be doing the second one, which is creating a fancy letterhead paper. So the objective for this project is to test comprehension of the CSS box model and other box related features, such as implementing backgrounds. And the ending result should look like this. So there's a header footer logo. And for the project brief, it says you have been given the files needed to create a letterhead paper template. You just need to put the files together and to get there, you need to blah, 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 blah. So they got all the requirements there. So I'm just gonna head up to the starting point. So first off, we need to make local copies of the HTML and CSS and save them as index.html and style.css in a new directory. So I'll go ahead and grab the HTML and CSS from the MDN repo. Let's copy the HTML and I've already created both of those files. So I'm just gonna paste in the code here. Same thing with the CSS, grab it, paste it. And next we need to save local copies of the top, bottom and logo images in the same directory as your code files. And what I've done here is I've created an images folder and I've already saved the files inside of an images folder. And then for the project requirements, I always take these requirements and then dump them into my own little checklist um, to make it easier to make sure I'm hitting all the requirements. So I've basically dropped these into Notion. So for the first checklist item, the main letter is to apply the CSS to the HTML. So I'm gonna come over to the HTML and go ahead and apply the CSS here. And now I can go ahead and check that off. So the next checklist item is to add a background declaration to the letter that fixes the top image to the top of the letter, fixes the bottom image to the bottom of the letter and adds a semi-transparent gradient over the top of both of the previous backgrounds that gives the letter a bit of texture, make it slightly dark, enter down, make it slightly dark near the top and bottom, but completely transparent for a large part of the center. So first we need to fix the top image to the top of the letter. So the container of the letter is inside of the article element. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for in the CSS as far as applying the images, the top and bottom images. Um, and again, the letter, the top image is like basically the top of the letter and the bottom is the bottom of the letter. So, um, so I'm gonna head over to the style.css, go to article. I'm going to add a background image. So I'm going to start with the top image. And so because this image, if I saved it right now, it's not saving. Oh, no wonder I had to refresh the page. Okay. Basically what I'm gonna have to do is add in some rules for this background uh, image. So I want it to be at the top and not repeat. Okay, good. So we got it at the top there. And then secondly, we need to fix the bottom image to the bottom of the letter. So basically I'm just gonna place a comma to add another rule for background and then add the second URL for 
the bottom image and I'm just gonna add bottom image there and kind of the same format um, I want it to stay at the bottom and to not repeat okay so it's sort of looking like the example over here on MDN so I'm actually gonna go ahead and just check that off so next we need to add a semi-transparent gradient over the top of both of the previous backgrounds that gives the letter a bit of texture and also just to go back to the example it needs to be slightly dark near the top and bottom but completely transparent for a large part of the center so i'm going to come back to the background property add a comma and so Additionally, in the background, I want to have a linear gradient. So to start from the top, I'm going to set the direction to two bottom and give it the appropriate color. And then it's going to go from that grayish color to white. And I'll stop it at about 20%. And then I'm going to set it to transparent. And then stop at about 80% and then it's gonna end on that gray color at the bottom. And save. Cool, now it's, it's doing the dark and light thing, but the only thing about transparent is I think it's a little too gray. It's kind of mixing with the background. And so it's giving it more of a grayish tint than white over here in the example. So I'm gonna try instead of transparent, setting that to white and then see that makes a difference yeah I think that's a little bit better as far as making it look more like the example so I'm gonna keep it at white rather than transparent okay so I can go ahead and check off that so for the next check it has to add another background declaration that just adds the top image to the top of the letter as a fallback for browsers that don't support the previous declaration so I'm gonna come here and go ahead and add that fallback for any browser that doesn't support all the fancy stuff below that. So top image and then add the top, no repeat. And then next it has add a white background color to the letter. So I'm gonna add background color and as far as adding fallbacks for this particular project so on MDN's linear gradient page um, on all of their pages you can scroll to the bottom and it talks about the support that's provided for different stuffs so for Internet Explorer 10 double position color stops and interpolation hints gradient midpoints and unit list zero for angle. All those are not supported in IE10. So that would be a reason definitely for the background color white. So in case, you know, the gradients don't show up, it'll have something to fall back on. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and check those two off the list. So next add a one mm top and bottom solid border to the letter in a color that is in keeping with the rest of the color scheme. Okay, so I'm gonna come down and add a border top of one mm solid. And then a border bottom. 1 mm solid okay and go ahead and save it so you can see the border here at the top and bottom and I'm gonna just inspect that take a look at the border here okay so the 1 mm border translates to 3.76562 pixels if you were curious and also mdn does talk about links absolute links absolute length units so mm 
is millimeters and it's equivalent to one tenth of one centimeter. But you can always inspect an element to get the translation of it in pixels. And I don't really use MMs very often. Okay, so I'm gonna check that check off. And so the next section of check items, we have the logo to the H1, add the logo as a background image. So I'm gonna come up or come down to the H1. And I was actually supposed to add my own CSS <laughs> below here, but we're not gonna worry about it. I'll just add it to their code. So add the logo as a background image. So I need to, so I'll go ahead and add the background property, add a URL, go to the images directory and then logo. And I do not want that sucker to repeat. <laughs> so let's save that. Awesome. And then next add a filter to the logo to give it a subtle drop shadow. So I'm gonna use the filter property for that. Add a drop shadow. I'm gonna do five pixels, five pixels, one pixel. So I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna use the RGBA function so that I'll, so that I'm able to give it a, give it an opacity. And I'm giving it, giving it an opacity of 0.7. Save that. So you can now see that it has a little bit of drop shadow there. And I'll go ahead and check those two items off. So now they want us to comment out the filter and, and implement the drop shadow in a different, slightly more cross browser, com browser compatible way, which still follows the shape of the round image. Okay, so I'll comment that out. I'll go ahead and add a box shadow, which is another way you can add a drop shadow and give it two pixels, two pixels, two pixels, five pixels, and then black. Save it. Um, so right now it's taking the complete shape of the box we really don't want that. So I'm gonna add a border radius of 50%. So now it's taking the shape of the box. So on the checklist, they have um, a, a slightly more cross compatible way. And if you go to the filter CSS property on MDN at the very bottom, once again, they do talk about the compatibility and the support for different things. And so for the filter, it's not supported by, let's see, Internet Explorer, ding, 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 once again. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, if you want it to be supported in pretty much everything, you can use Box Shadow and then you won't have any problems with that. So I'll go ahead and check that out. And then for the hints and tips, uh, it says, remember that you can create a fallback for older browsers by putting the fallback version of a declaration first, which we did that up there on the article. I put the fallback first for the background and the background color, followed by the version that works across newer browsers only. Older browsers, Ugh. Older browsers will apply the first declaration and ignore the second one, whereas newer browsers will apply the first one, then override it with the second one. So just a little bit of insight on that. And then feel free to create your own graphics for the assessment if you wish. I don't think so. <laughs> I think the graphics we had are good. All right, so over on the right-hand side is the final result. And the left is the example so we're matching up pretty good with the final results so looking good again this was the creating fancy letterhead project on mdn so if you want to go check it out and give it a shot 
It's on MDN's website. And as always, everybody, thank you for joining another Code Music Chill session here at Gishel Tech TV. And I will see you in the next one.